Hello. In this tutorial, you can learn to program array-based animated slideshows into your page elements using JavaScript and CSS3. First, let's take a quick look at the finished product of what you'll be learning to program. What happens is, every two seconds, the words fade in and out using an array. And once the array gets to the last word, the end of the array, then it just goes back to the beginning of the array and starts over. And it's basically just a slideshow and you can put any kind of HTML content you want into any element on the page. Okay, we're beginning with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. Mine is named example.html. You can name yours whatever you want. I have a style element in place inside of the head element. And I also have a script element in place inside of the head element. And then my body tag is empty right now. So let's start with that. Let's type in my dog is and then here we're going to put a span element because I want it to be in line with the rest of my sentence my little slideshow but you can use a div now I'm going to give this span an ID that's equal to WSS that's short for words slideshow so in this span element is where all the magic's going to happen now in the CSS in our document we're going to put a rule that is targeting that WSS ID on the page and let me bring these down a little bit Opacity is zero to start out with. That way it's transparent, 100%. And then I put the WebKit and then the standard syntax for the transition property. And we just want to make sure that anytime the opacity is changed for that element, that it happens in an animated fashion using this transition property. And I just put WebKit to make sure it targets other uh, WebKit-based browsers that might not use the standardized transition syntax yet but most browsers use this, the standardized transition syntax already this line is just in place as a failsafe so really in the future this line right here would not be needed and that's all the CSS we need and really we only put this in place because in our JavaScript there's going to be changing of the opacity for this element on the page and when JavaScript changes the opacity we're not going to make the animation JavaScript based the animation is going to be CSS3 based because we have already instructed this element anytime its opacity changes that it's going to be an animated transition when it does change it's not going to be a sudden change in values it's going to be a transitional change in its opacity so one line in JavaScript can trigger that change now let's go into our JavaScript and let's make the program happen and we don't need much JavaScript at all it's very lightweight First thing we'll do is assign some variables for the program. I'll put var wss underscore i, and this stands for the index, which usually you would see that as i, but I don't want it to interfere with any of your other stuff you have, might have going on on your page. So I just put it wss underscore i, and this value will be incremented in the program when it runs. So we'll make that starting value zero, and we're gonna use this value to traverse through the array. Now the next variable we're going to create is the word slideshow array. We'll make that equal to an empty array and then we'll start putting some values in it. I'll put the first one was cute. The second element in that array is going to be the word happy. And here's three more elements in that array. So my slideshow is going to start at the word cute and it's going to traverse through this array until it gets to the word loyal. And then it's going to start over the front of the array again and it'll just keep looping like that. So right under where I assign this array, I can put my first function. I'm gonna have two little tiny functions. The first one will name function, word slideshow next, open close parentheses, open in curly brace, and go down a couple of lines and put in your closing curly brace. And you can just copy the structure for that function, go down one line and put another function in place. And this one you wanna name WSS slide. And before we get too far into it, let's put one more variable called lm up in the top of the script. Okay, now all we have to do is go into the HTML and anywhere after the element that you're targeting, which in my case it's this ID of WSS, I'm gonna put in a new script tag right here. And I'm gonna make sure I close that script tag or that script element. Actually, let's give this lm variable a WSS prefix there. So let's take that variable name and after the element on the page is loaded, that means when it's ready in the DOM and we can then script to it, 
we're going to type in WSSLM is equal to document dot get element by ID we'll target that ID on the page which was WSS this ID right here for this span element now I'm doing that so that way my program knows which element to affect and I don't have to keep assigning which element to affect I won't have to keep referencing a new document object each time that these functions run because it's assigned right here or you can do it in an on load event the window dot on load event you can assign some variables in the window dot on load event and then start up your animation but I'm just gonna put it down here in the page under the target element now all I have to do is take this slide function and that's going to initiate the whole process so right here we run the slide function and the slide function is going to trigger the next function and then they're just going to kind of bounce off one another alright the first thing in the slide function is we're going to target the WSS underscore element variable which is the object reference for the element that we're targeting on the page the element that the slideshow is going into so we target that and we make its dot inner HTML equal to the array whatever array index we're at within our increment of this I variable and the incrementing of the I variable is going to happen right here so we can say WSS underscore I plus plus that's where we're going to do the incrementing of the index so basically the first time it runs this is going to be WSS underscore I is going to be equal to zero so it's going to target cute the second time it runs it's going to be a one because it gets incremented and then we're going to have happy display and then the third time it'll be playful so on and so forth when it gets to loyal we're going to make it go back to the beginning now there's just two more lines we need down in this slide function let's pop those into place now what this line does is it also targets that same element style property and the opacity setting for that element and remember when I said we're going to change the opacity for that element there's no JavaScript animation happening here we're just simply specifying for the opacity to turn from 0 to 1 and when it happens CSS3 is going to handle the transition using this line here for the opacity property and that animation happens over one second in a linear fashion and it has a zero second delay now the next line is to make the next uh, array element come into place so what we're going to do is run the WSS next function and that's what makes the slideshow occur you can change this to a 5 or a 10 if you want so that means when this function is called to run right here these lines of code are going to execute and then this line of code tells this function to run two seconds after this line is read by the compiler so once this line is read by the compiler the program waits two seconds and executes this WSSS next function okay so remember when I told you we increment the I variable inside of the next function next thing we're gonna do in that function is we're going to target the element style opacity and make it equal to zero because down here it was changed to one that means everything is displaying so when it's a transition occurring we're gonna make it go to zero again and then we simply need an if condition to make the I index incrementer or incremental variable go back to zero once it reaches the end of this array so let's pop that logic into place real quick so we say if the I index number gets greater than our array and our array is right here dot length minus one and our array length is one two three four five so this array length minus one is four so if WSSI is greater than four in our case then we're going to make the incremental variable back to zero again and that's what makes the array loop and then the very last line of the program is we make the WSS slide function run one second after this line of code runs so when the compiler reaches this line of code the program waits one second and then runs this function again so basically these two functions are bouncing off of one another this one when a compiler reaches this line the program waits two seconds to initiate this function when the compiler reaches this line the program waits one second to initiate or execute this function here
So they're just bouncing off of each other that way. And I have a one second time value here because my animation is one second. And my numbers might not even be precise. You might have to tweak the numbers to where it's more logical. But let's take a look at it in our favorite browser. So it starts with my dog is cute. You can see the animation occurs and it looks decent to me. It looks like it's changing the words right where it should within the transition animation. So when it gets to loyal, it goes back to cute, you see? Now, all we have to do is just put an H1 heading around all that stuff. And my span is within that heading now. So I'll see it a little bit bigger. Okay, I just want to give a few final pointers to people who are interested. All of this can be packaged up into an object-oriented class file in JavaScript. That way it can be more reusable. And the numbers can probably be tweaked to where they make more sense or it makes a better animation. I don't know. And what else? This, uh, this array can have as many items that you want in it. And the script will still work dynamically without you having to adjust any of the values. So you can put as many elements as you want. You see, I only have five. You can have a hundred or a thousand elements in that array. And yes, this can be HTML content where you're adding images or whatever you want. So for example, if I was to add an HTML element there, like the underline, what was the first one? Cute. So you can see now you can stack as much HTML as you want within this string. So if I take a look at this now, the word cute should be underlined but not any of the others you see so you can see how HTML let's wait for it to come back around so you can see how the HTML is passed through there no problem so you can put images whatever you want in your slideshow and if you want you can just put these down like one line here or put them something like that and then Put them each on their own line if you want to put a lot of HTML in there and structure it like that. That would be a good structure if you wanted to add a lot of HTML into each one of these array elements. But since mine is just for words, I'm going to leave it just like that. I wrote it just this afternoon hastily. I wrote it hastily, so it can probably be refined. All right, so that shows you how to create any kind of slideshow you want, really, using JavaScript and CSS3.